This is the Bicycle Top Assembly video, part four. We are just about done with our assembly, and all we have to do are add the screws and nuts that hold the bike together, and also add a grip on the left side of the handlebar. The screws you will be using were downloaded from a manufacturer's website, and I modified these screws by adding a mate reference to this edge on the bottom of the head of the screw. This edge will automatically create a coincident and concentric mate when the screw is hovered over a hole in the assembly, which you'll soon see. The axles of the wheels will be fastened to the bicycle using a custom M10 nut. This has been supplied to you in your components kit. This part also includes an axis going through the nut, which you may find convenient for mating. So I'm going to insert all the screws first, working in a general direction from the front of the bike to the rear of the bike, and then finish up adding the nuts to the axles. I'll start at the stem, where the stem clamps onto the handlebars. The screws used here are going to be socket head screws that are an M5 by 16 millimeters long. These are going to be inserted into these holes, which were made using the hole wizard when you made this tutorial part. This was the first hole made using the hole wizard, so we will place our first screw here. So going into insert components, I have that screw open right now in session. This is the M5 by 16 millimeter socket cap head screw. Drag that into position. And as I hover over this first hole, I get a symbol indicating that an automatic mate is about to occur. If I click this with my left mouse button, that automatically drops the screw in place and creates a concentric and a coincident mate to the edge of the hole. There's nothing else I have to do. Now I've got four other holes to fill. These holes were done using the hole wizard, which is a type of pattern. I can take advantage of this pattern to populate the rest of the holes with this screw. And this is how I'd like you to do it just for practice. So we will go into feature driven component pattern and the component we will pattern is this first screw and the driving feature is the hole wizard that created these four holes. Both this hole and the inner threaded hole were both created by hole wizard so I can select either. So I'll just select this hole here, and we see in the highlight that all four holes are going to be populated with this original screw. Just click the check mark. I automatically get all four holes with screws in it. This isn't a huge time savings when I'm adding only four screws, but it's a great time savings if you've got dozens of holes to fill with screws. The key thing to remember is which of the holes was created first, when you did the hole wizard, and that's where the first screw wants to go. We created this hole first, that's why we put the first screw there. Now if I look at my feature tree, I see this first screw that was inserted. If I scroll down a little bit, I see this derived hole pattern. If I click this open, I see the three screws that were automatically created with this feature-driven pattern. The next screw to add will be the one at the top of the stem cap. We want the bottom of the screw head to mate with this edge of the hole, not with this edge of the hole. So insert components, and I don't think I have the appropriate screw in my box here, so I'll hit browse, and I'm going to go to the folder that contains the screws that I downloaded from the web. You should have this folder available to you if you're in my class. The screw I need is the M6 by 16 socket head cap screw. So I click on this, open. This also has a mate reference added to it. So I want to be careful to mate this down to that bottom hole. And this might flip around on me a little bit. If it does, I can keep manipulating it till it ends in the right position. Or if it's flipped backwards the wrong way, I can use the tab key to also flip it the correct direction. I don't want it to mate upward like this. I want it to mate downward like that. This looks correct, and I'll hit my left mouse button. So we're successful there. 
So now we can move on to the screws that clamp the stem onto the steering tube. Those screws go into these counterboard holes, and we want to mate those screws to this edge and to this edge, not this edge and this edge. So again, going to Insert Components, Browse, and choosing once again the M6 by 16 socket head cap screw. And before I insert the screw, I want to come over to the Feature Manager and push pin it so it doesn't collapse after I insert the first screw. Now I can bring the screw back into position over the mating edge, and you see that I have a second screw ready to go on the end of my cursor. So I can just drag this down to here, mate that into that hole. I get a third screw, but I'm not going to be using that one, so I just use the escape key to get out of this mode. Now I can zoom out a little bit and see what we've done. We've got the two screws here for the clamp on the steering tube, the screw at the top of the stem cap, and the screws to clamp the handlebar. Now we can go down to the screws that fasten the bottle cage. And these are a different type of a screw called a button head screw. So again, we'll go into insert components, browse. We will be using this M5 by 12 millimeter socket button head. Open. And again, I will push pin the feature manager. And I will drag my screw over the edge of the hole in the bottle cage. There's the first screw. We have a second screw at the end of our cursor, so I drop that over this edge, pop that into place, and I don't need the third screw, so I will hit the escape key. Moving right along, we need to put a screw into the seat post clamp. This one will be an M6 by 20 millimeter socket head screw. Insert components, browsing to my screws. This is the appropriate screw. Open, zoom in a little bit, and I want to meet to that bottom edge there. Pop that into place, and I'm done. The last screw that I need to insert is the one that clamps the seat onto the seat post. That goes down into the bottom here. This is an M8 by 35 millimeter screw. So insert components, browse. This is my last screw in the list here. Open. You just drag this over the edge of that hole. And that pops it into place. And I'll zoom out for a minute here. And I'll take a cross section of this area so you can see what's going on. So on my front plane, I will select a cross section. Now you can see how the screw passes through the seat post, the clamp, and into this special nut. So that's why the hole in the nut and the hole in the seat post have to be in alignment with each other. The last fasteners to add are the nuts that hold the wheel axles. Zooming into the front, insert components, and I happen to have the nut open in session. This is part of your components kit. So just clicking on that, dragging this into place, and I need to make a mate between the bottom face of the nut and this face of the dropout plate and a concentric mate with the center of the nut and the axle. Starting with this coincident mate, now I have a choice about how I will get that concentric mate. I've got an axis passing through the nut and an axis passing through the wheel, but I have to go into my feature tree to find those. Or I can just choose the cylindrical surface of the hole and this round surface at the edge of the thread and use that as a concentric mate. So I'll do it the lazy way here. So choosing this surface and this edge of the thread that mates and I'm done. And I don't really care that I can spin the nut in place. If you built this thread as a spiral sweep, you might not be able to click on this edge and get a concentric mate. In that case, you will have to use the axis passing through the wheel assembly. Now, going to the other side, we do the same thing. 
insert component, nut, making my mate to the bottom of the nut, the dropout plate, and the concentric from here to this round edge here. And that gets that nut into place and the front wheel is completely secured. Now we just have to add the nuts to the rear wheel. The same process, insert component, nut, mate, bottom surface of the nut, dropout plate, and if this should happen to flip the wrong way on you, you can just use this toggle to get it going the right way. Then we select this cylindrical inner hole, this edge, and that nut is in place. And finally, the last of the fasteners to be added to this assembly, insert component, nut, Mate the bottom of the nut with the dropout plate, the hole with the edge, and we now have all of the fasteners in our bicycle, so it won't fall apart if we try to ride it. Now we have just one last thing to do for the assembly, which is to add the left hand grip. And just as an exercise for this particular project, we are going to use the mirror components command to make this grip. We could just as easily insert a second grip and mate it, but this is a little practice for something new. What we will do is make a mirror of a component, and this mirror will only exist in the assembly. There is no separate part file for it. Because this grip has to be able to move with the handlebars when it turns, the mirror plane we want to use is not the front plane of the assembly, but the front plane of the fork. That way, when the fork turns, the mirror plane will turn with it, and the grip will always be in the proper location. Going up to the top here, where we can see our fork and the front plane for the fork, we will select the front plane of the fork, then go to our Pattern and Mirroring pull-down menu and select Mirror Components. That's pop the front plane of the fork into this box here, and the components we want to mirror are going to be just the handlebar grip. Finish that, and we see the grip in its proper location. Collapsing the feature tree and rolling down to the bottom, we see the mirror component feature added to the tree, and we see inside here the grip. Now if I turn the handlebars, I should see the mirror grip moving with it. If I see the grip moving off the handlebars when I turn the handlebars, it means I used the wrong plane for mirroring. To finish up this assembly, I'm going to tidy up my lengthly feature tree here and also add the second configuration that allows me to move the fork while the default configuration keeps the fork locked in place. We have a lot of hardware here. We can put this into their own folders. So I will just click on the first screw in the list and holding my shift key, highlight the last one, and then right click and go down to add to new folder. And I can call this hardware or screws or whatever I want to do. We see that that has substantially shortened the feature tree. Then I can group together some other parts, such as all the parts related to the seat or all the parts related to the handlebars. And if you have these parts in an odd order, now's the time to start just moving them around to get them organized. The good thing about moving parts in an assembly feature tree is that there are no parent-child relations to worry about. The one thing you do need to worry about is if you want to move a part in between two assemblies, like I'm about to do here, holding my left mouse button, when you get over an assembly, you get this symbol which indicates you are about to drop the part into that assembly. You don't want to do that. To avoid that from happening, just hold your Alt key down and it'll allow you to put parts in between assemblies in the feature tree if you desire to do so. I'm not going to be doing that in this particular case anyway. So now what I'm going to do is make some folders for the seat parts and the handlebar parts. So clicking on my seat post, holding down my Shift key and going down to the saddle that's all the parts related to the seat. Right click, 
add to new folder, and I'll just call this seat parts. That's further organized and shortened by feature tree. Then I will click on the stem, hold my shift down, go all the way down to the grip, right click, add to new folder, and I will call this handlebar parts. And I think I will just take the chain here and move this up into this position here. If I want, I can also rename these features. So I can call the mirror component feature grip mirror to remind me what that's for. And I can call this feature handlebar screw pattern. The last thing to do now is make my second configuration. It's a lot easier to do that now after I've inserted all my components because that way when I make the new configuration, all those components will be unsuppressed in the new configuration. You'll recall that I had added a mate for the fork that would lock that into place for the default configuration. I'm going to unsuppress that mate to straighten out the wheel. That was located in the fork. I can find that in two places. One way is to click on the plus next to the fork and open up the mates folder here and here we see the specially named mate that I created, suppressed to allow free fork movement, and right now it is suppressed. The other place I can find that is going down to the bottom, and I have a folder that shows all of the mates for the entire assembly. If I scroll down to the appropriate place, I can find that right here, suppressed to allow free fork movement. If I wanted to, I could even drag the mate down to the bottom of the list just to make it a little bit easier to find. And that will not affect any of the other mates or how the assembly looks. So I think I'll just do that. Drag that down to here. Again, it doesn't matter the order of the mates. SOLIDWORKS considers all mates to be occurring simultaneously. Now what I can do is unsuppress that mate, and we see that the wheel straightens out. So that's our default configuration. We will now make a new configuration, right click, add configuration, and we will just call this something like free fork. And for this configuration, we'll go back to our feature tree, go to our mates. We purposely put that mate at the bottom where we can find it. We will suppress that mate. So it will be unsuppressed in the default and suppressed in this second configuration. I can close the mates, collapse the fork, you have a nice neat feature tree, and two configurations, one that allows the fork to turn and one that does not. And that finally completes the bicycle assembly. The video following this one will be to make the two-sheet drawing for this project.